Yes, mortgage insurance worth your money. Let's find out today. Hey guys, it's Thomas here. No matter if you're looking to buy a place soon or you're going to renew your mortgage sometime in the future, at some point you'll be meeting with the mortgage specialist to go over the paperwork and the mortgage specialist there will always jump in and say something like this. Hey, congrats on getting your new place. This is probably one of the biggest investments in your life and large investments are always worth protecting. Imagine something unexpected happened to you and you can no longer work to pay for the mortgage. What's your family going to do? Then they start pulling out an application. But don't you worry, we have something called the mortgage insurance and will take care of the mortgage for you in case you pass away. And all you have to do is sign right here. He would then go on to ask you a few questions. And the next thing you know, the payment is already embedded into your mortgage payment and you won't even notice. Sounds familiar, right? Have you ever wondered if this is too good to be true? So in this video, I will go over all the stuff you need to know to see if mortgage insurance is really that great and also how it compares to a traditional life insurance. Let's dive in. First thing first, the mortgage insurance I'm referring to here is not the mortgage insurance from the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corp when your down payment is less than 20% of the value of your home. This mortgage protection insurance I'm talking about is provided by the bank and in case you pass away, they will take care of the mortgage for you. But is that really the case? And here's what I'm going to do. I want to compare a mortgage insurance and a term insurance under the same company. Then I want to compare them in four different areas, eligibility, coverage, price, and flexibility. So in the red corner, we have RBC Mortgage Insurance from RBC Bank. I went to their website and downloaded their contract. In the other corner, we have a traditional life insurance from RBC Insurance Department. I also download their sample policy online. First, let's take a look at the eligibility as in who can apply for the mortgage insurance and when the coverage ends. For the mortgage insurance, here it says, you can only apply when you are between 18 years old and 66 years old. In addition, you can only apply for neither the life and critical illness or the life and disability, but not both. It's worth pointing out that in a traditional life insurance, it does not have this kind of restriction. Next, if we take a look at the when the coverage ends, there are lots of conditions that will end the coverage early. And I highlighted some of the trickier ones, such as the coverage will end on the date the principal balance of your mortgage increases, on the last day of the month in which you turn 70 years old, and on the date you are no longer the borrower, co-borrower, or guarantor of the mortgage. With these strict conditions, your mortgage insurance may fail to pay if you want to change it in the mortgage amount. You cannot transfer your ownership even if it's to your children. What's more, with inflation and spending habits, there are tons of families who are still paying on their mortgage over the age of 70. On the other hand, most of the traditional term insurance covers you until the age of 80 or 85, or allow you to convert it to a permanent life insurance. It's easy to see why a traditional life insurance provides you far more flexibility. In terms of the coverage amount, as you can see here, the maximum mortgage amount that you can cover is $750,000. Imagine if you live in cities like Vancouver or Toronto, where the median detached home prices are well over a million, your mortgage amount could easily exceed the maximum coverage amount. And when you compare this to a traditional life insurance, it has no limit on the coverage amount as long as you can justify it. Now, let's go back to the definition for mortgage insurance. In exchange for a monthly premium, the bank will cover the mortgage balance when the policyholder passes away. This might seem obvious, but your mortgage payment should periodically decrease over time. That means that your mortgage insurance coverage is also decreasing at the same time. While you're still paying the same payments, with life insurance, the death benefit of the payout remains the same throughout your term. Also, this is very interesting. As you can see here, there's something called the prorated coverage. What this means is, if my mortgage balance is more than $750 initially, the bank will not give the full amount, even if my mortgage balance drops below $750,000. 
For example, say when I got my place, the mortgage balance was a million dollars. At the time that I pass away, the balance was already down to five hundred thousand. If I sign up for the mortgage insurance, I thought it would take care of the entire amount since it's under seven hundred fifty thousand. But no, with the prorates in this policy, seven fifty k divided by a million times five hundred k, they will only give me three hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. And now my family has to figure out the rest of the mortgage balance. Number three, let's talk about the price. For the mortgage insurance, since it's actually a group insurance, they only have what's called an age band. Where for the regular life insurance, the cost of an insurance is based on age, smoking habits, gender, and other health-related questions. So, say you are thirty years old, getting a five hundred thousand dollar mortgage. For the LBC term life insurance, it will be around forty-five dollars per month, hundred dollars per month if you're a smoker. For the mortgage insurance, it will also be forty-five dollars per month, regardless if you smoke or not. And if you want to cover two people's life, then the mortgage insurance seems to be a better deal. However, this is where you need to pay attention. Previously, we said every five years your mortgage will be renewed. Normally, you will switch to another lender for better rates, or you might refinance your house again. Either way. Since there's a change on the carrier or the mortgage balance, you have to apply for a new mortgage insurance. Only this time, you're five years older, meaning you will need to pay a higher premium. And remember, this will happen every five years. Your insurance cost increases, but to get a coverage that's dropping over the time of your lifespan. With term insurance, though, the price will be locked for the length of the term that you sign up. So you will be paying the same rates for the next twenty to thirty years. Lastly, let's compare the flexibility, such as ownership, portability, policy renewal, and what you can do with the money. If you have mortgage life insurance, it's important to point out that both the owner and the beneficiary of the insurance are the mortgage lender. In other words, the claim money will go to the bank regardless. For traditional life insurance, however, the money will be given to your family. Your family can choose to pay off the mortgage or use it on something different. This would give them a much higher flexibility. Also, for the traditional life insurance, it's always portable. This means even if you switch to a different mortgage lender, your life insurance is not affected. It is not unusual that you might have second thoughts on your place. Sometimes you might want to sell it, or you might want to refinance it. The mortgage insurance will be affected every time you make a change to your mortgage. Bottom line for all of this is that a mortgage insurance may be a convenient thing to get, because all you have to do is to answer a few questions, sign it on the dotted line, and that's it. And sometimes the bank might even say this is mandatory to get one. The downside is, even though it might not be obvious right away, is that there's a lot of inconvenience in the future for this brief convenience. I rarely say never ever. Buy a certain financial product, but the mortgage protection insurance is definitely one of the things that I don't recommend. Not only the price isn't the greatest, there's a lot of dispute on the eligibility, and it's definitely not as flexible compared to a regular term life insurance. So yeah, if you're looking to protect against debt, go for a term life insurance. They are inexpensive, the rates will stay the same, and it provides much more flexibility. Did you learn something new in this video? As always, let me know what are your thoughts down below. And if you want to learn how money works and how you can work with money, then I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.